Vectors provide us a great transition into talking about equations of surfaces in three-dimensional space. We're going to start here in this section talking specifically about lines and planes. So we're going to answer the question, how do we find equations of lines and planes in space in 3D graphing. And we'll start with the first one being the equation of a line. And similar to how we do equations of lines in 2 space, y equals mx plus b, in 3 space, we also get a slope-intercept feel to a formula. But we're going to set it up with vectors. We're going to let r0 be a vector. We're going to call it x0, y0, z0 be a vector to a point on the line. We're going to let v, which is going to be represented with abc, be a parallel vector. to the line. In other words, vector v is going in the same direction. Then, actually, let's look at a visual of what we have here. So we've got our three-dimensional space. And let's say there's some line floating out here in three-dimensional space. We're going to take a point on the line. And that point, we're going to call x0, y0, z0. And so the vector that points at that is going to be vector r0. And then we're going to have another vector that's parallel to the blue line. We're going to call that vector v. That's kind of visually what the pieces are. If we combine those pieces together, the line is the vector r equal to the r0 vector plus the parallel vector times t, which is going to create a parametric equation in terms of t. So the line is the vector r0 plus the vector times t, where we kind of have a slope-intercept feel where we've got a slope of the vector, which is parallel, and the intercept or a starting point is that r0 point. So it kind of feels like that y equals mx plus b format. Now we can break this vector out. r is the vector x, y, z. Is equal to the r0, which is the x0, y0, z0, plus the parallel vector, which is a, b, c, times the parametric variable t. This is the vector equation of the line. And then if we take that vector equation of the line and simplify, to get a parametric equation.
where the vector x, y, z, you can see if we multiply the scalar t through the ABC, we get A, T, B, T, C, T, and then we add the components together and we get x naught plus a t comma y naught plus b t comma z naught plus c t. And if we take this apart component by component, we end up with the parametric equations. x is equal to the x component, x naught plus a t. y is equal to the y components, y naught plus b t. And z is equal to the z components, z naught plus ct. And this becomes the parametric equation for a line where x naught, y naught, z naught are on the line. And a, b, c is a parallel vector. And in fact, we can go one step further and solve each of these equations for t to get what we call the symmetric equation for a line. Solving the first equation, we would subtract x naught and divide by a. That equals t. But also, the second equation is y minus y naught over b is equal to t. And z minus z naught over c is equal to t. And these become the symmetric equations for the line. So if these are the equations for a line, let's see if we can make one. Let's do an example where we find the equation of a line through two points. We're going to find the equation of the line through the points 1, negative 3, 2, and 5, negative 2, 8. Any two points in space can be connected with a line, and we can find that line. First, we need to know a parallel vector and a point on the line. So for the parallel vector, that's just going to be the vector that connects these two points together. Let's take the 1, negative 3, 2 as the initial point and the 5, negative 2, 8 as the final or terminal point. Let's call that t for terminal point. And we know to get the vector that connects them, we subtract the coordinates. 5 minus 1 is 4. Negative 2 minus negative 3 is positive 1. And 8 minus 2 is 6. So now we know 4, 1, 6 is a parallel vector in the same direction as this line. We can use either one of these points. So, so we've got our parallel vector. Let's do our uh, r naught vector being just the first point. We could have picked either point, but 1, negative 3, 2. And from this, we should be able to get a vector equation for the line. And the vector equation for the line is x, y, z is equal to the initial vector, 1, negative 3, 2, plus the parallel vector, 4, 1, 6, times t. And once I have the vector equation, we can find the parametric equations. for the line by simplifying. The x-coordinate is equal to a 1 plus 4t. The y-component is equal to the y's, which is negative 3 plus 1t. And the z-component is equal to 
the z's, which is 2 plus 6t. And this becomes the parametric equations that will build this three-dimensional line that connects the two points. We can then solve each of these equations for t to find the symmetric equation form of each of these lines. When we do that, we get x minus 1 over 4 equals t is equal to y plus 3 over 1, which we don't need to do the divide 1, which is equal to z minus 2 over 6, which are all equal to t. So we have three different ways to represent this same line, either in vector form, parametric form, or symmetric form. But this gives us the equation of the line that connects the two points. Any two points, we can find a line that connects them. If we have three points, though, three points can be used to define what's called a plane. Let's look at finding the equation of a plane. And a plane is just a big, flat surface, kind of like a piece of paper or your screen. But it goes on forever, just like a line goes on forever, but it's incredibly thin. Uh, the flat surface is this big flat space that spreads out forever. And we're going to set this up in a similar but slightly different way than we set up the line. We're going to let r0 be a vector to a point on the plane. And just like before, we can represent r0 as x0, y0, z0. And we're going to have another vector. We called it the vector v before because it was parallel. But this time, we need a normal vector or an orthogonal vector that's perpendicular. So because it's normal, we're going to call it vector n be a normal, which means perpendicular, or orthogonal vector to the plane. So visually, what we have, if I were to draw a picture, Somewhere out here is this big flat space that goes on forever. And we've got a point on the plane. That's our point, x0, y0, z0. The vector that goes to it, that's our r0. And then there's this other vector that's going to come straight out of it. It's going to be perpendicular to the plane. That is our normal vector. What we know about vectors that are normal or orthogonal is the dot product of the vectors must equal 0. So if I pick any random point on here, we'll call that vector r. And I look at the vector that connects r to r0, it's going to be perpendicular to vector n. Well, the vector that connects r to r0 is the vector r minus r0. And if I dot that vector with something that's normal to it or orthogonal to it, we know orthogonal vectors have a dot product of 0. So we can say that the plane is the product, the normal vector dotted with r minus r0. Similar to before, that normal vector we said 
uh, let's call that normal vector, just like before, is going to be the vector ABC. So the vector ABC is dotted with the difference between our general vector at any x, y, z point minus the specific point on the plane x0, y0, z0. We know that product is going to be 0, which means if we simplify, We've got a, b, c dotted with x minus x naught, y minus y naught, and z minus z naught equals 0, which means if I keep going, this simplifies to what we call the scalar equation. of a plane. The dot product says we multiply the components. a times x minus x naught plus b times y minus y naught plus c times z minus z naught equals 0. And remember, a, b, c is the components of the normal vector. And x0, y0, z0 are the coordinates of a point on the plane. This is the scalar equation of a plane. Good one to know. Now, I could go through a step further, and I could distribute and combine like terms to get rid of the parentheses. This gives what we call the general form of a plane. And so when we distribute, we get an ax, we get a by, we get a cz, and then we get a lot of constants that we're going to say all those constants are going to add together to a d equals 0. And that becomes the general form of a plane. So we looked at an example where we connected two points to get a line. Let's do an example where we connect three points, which always define a plane. I guess there's one exception. If those three points are linear, they don't define a plane. But let's say these three points are not collinear. Let's say our points are 3, negative 1, 2. Q is the point 4, negative 2, 1. And R is the point negative 5, 3, negative 1. Well, the first thing we need to find the plane that connects these three points is we need the normal vector. A plane is built with a normal vector and any point. So we need a normal vector. And the best way to get a normal vector or an orthogonal vector is to use a cross product of two vectors on the plane. So we can connect p, q, and r in any two ways. There's three or six, if you count backwards, ways to connect these. We need to connect two of them. Let's connect p and q in a vector, which is going to be the vector 4 minus 3 is 1. Negative 2 minus negative 1 is negative 1. And 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Then let's connect the vectors p and r together. I could have done q and r. We'd get the same final result, any two. But p to r, negative 5 minus 3 is negative 8. 3 minus a negative 1 is 4. And negative 1 
minus 2 is negative 3. To get a vector that's normal to both of these, because both these vectors actually lie on the plane, connecting points that are on the plane, we want a normal vector. We're going to cross them. And when we cross, ignoring the first column, negative 1 times negative 3 is 3. Minus 4 times negative 1 is negative 4, so 3 plus 4. Comma, ignoring the middle column, going backwards, negative 1 times negative 8 is 8. Minus 1 times negative 3 is positive 3. Comma, ignoring the third column, 1 times 4 is 4. Minus negative 1 times negative 8 is positive 8. And so our normal vector then is equal to 7, 11, negative 4. We can pick any point on the plane, a vector that points to any point. So let's just use the first point. It doesn't matter which one we use. 3, negative 1, 2. And now that we have a normal vector and a point, we should be able to build the scalar equation. And you recall the scalar equation is a times x minus x naught plus b times y minus y naught plus c times z minus z naught equals 0, where a, b, and c come off the normal vector. So a is 7 times x minus the x point, which is 3, plus b, which is 11, times y minus the y point, which is negative 1, plus c, which is negative 4, times z minus 2 equals 0. This then is the scalar equation form of the plane that connects the three points. We can do a little algebra to get the general equation form of the plane. And we can get that general equation by distributing 7x minus 21 plus 11y plus 11 minus 4z plus 8 equals 0. Combining like terms, we get 7x plus 11y minus 4z. And then we combine the negative 21 plus 11 plus 8 to get negative 2 equals 0. What I've done here is tried to give you a visual of what we just graphed, the 7x plus 11y minus 4z minus 2. And as you can see, we end up with this flat plane that we can see from all angles in three dimensions. And if we were to try and find the point on here of negative or of positive 3 on the x, negative 1 on the y, it should also put us at about z of 2. And this graph doesn't quite get us there exactly, but it should be around here. You can see 4 on x, negative 2 on y. It's approximately a z of 1. Again, the graph doesn't quite hit it perfectly because it's in between these points. And you can also see negative 5 on x, 3 on the y. It's going to be approximately negative 1 on the z if I could get in there perfectly. But this graph only lets me hit on the grids, which are off slightly. But you can see we've made this plane that connects our three points using our vectors. So that's what we're looking at today. The equation of a plane is found by using a normal vector and a point on the plane. The equation of the line is found using a parallel vector and a point on the line. Take a look at the homework assignment to practice some of these, and we will see you to work on these further in class.